Okay, we'll continue on our discussion about quadratic functions. Uh, in particular, we're worried about how can we factor an equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Uh, we've already looked at the case when a is equal to one, so now we want to look at the cases where our lead coefficient, or a, is not equal to one. The first thing we want to do with regard to that is divide out by a common factor. Uh, to give you an example of how this would work, let's see one. So given this a problem, 3x squared plus 24x minus 27 equals 0, I can see that all the coefficients are divisible by 3, so I can divide that entire equation by 3. And when I divide that entire equation by 3, I get x squared plus 8x minus 9 equals 0. Now it's back to the simple form of having a lead coefficient of 1, and I can factor and solve that quickly. And so I factor that in x plus 9 to x minus 1 equals 0, which gives me that my solutions are either is x is negative 9 or x is positive 1. So dividing by the common factor can get us all the way down, can make the problem much more simple. Here we see another example where we have 6x squared minus 2x minus 20 equals 0. Um, and so again, I can see all of those are divisible by 2, so I can factor that out. But that still leaves me with a lead coefficient of 3 in front of my x squared. I also have minus x and minus 10 uh, there. So uh, we'll talk in a minute about how to solve it still when we, we but we just we still still have a coefficient in this case. The other concept we want to talk about along these same lines is changing a negative. And what do I mean by that? If we have a negative value for a, it becomes a little bit strange to deal with in terms of finding factors of a and that sort of thing later. Most of us are much more comfortable dealing with positive numbers. So let's if we need to, go ahead and divide out by negative 1 to make that simpler on ourselves. So we'll see an example of that. So if I had negative 4x squared minus 16x plus 15 equals 0, I can just divide this entire thing by negative 1, uh, which will help me get rid of the negative sign up front. So I divide everything by negative 1, and I get 4x squared plus 16x and minus 15 now equals 0. Again, not something you have to do, but a lot, again, a lot of us think better with positive exponents up front. Okay, but we're still at the point on these two where we haven't learned how to really solve those yet. So let's move on to that, how do we do that? And again, if we're trying to factor, remember we're starting with ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and what we're trying to do is break it down into two factors, and I've used um, the same m and n for uh, the constant values there in, uh, just like we used when we had a, co a coefficient of one. Uh, but also, now we may have coefficients in front of our terms here, so I've used P and Q. So one thing that would help is if we were to multiply this back together, we can learn some of the relationships between those and A, B, and C. So when I multiply those terms together, first times first, I get P times Q times X squared. I multiply the outer ones, I get P times N times X. I multiply the inners, I get M times Q times X. And when I multiply the last, I get M times N. So um, again, this still has to be the same as this equation, so what does that tell us? That A has to be P times Q, that C has to equal M times N, and then that B, the coefficient in front of X, is actually a combination of P times N and M times Q, which is not a very intuitive thing to figure out, um, which is why factoring these types of problems is a little more tricky than the uh, previous problem. Because before we just knew that M and N had to add up to be B, now we've got these, multi these factors multiplied together that have to get there. So finding a unique solution is a little bit more difficult. The first method we're going to discuss in how to solve these is really what I just call guess and check, um, which can be a very tedious method, um, but possibly one that you guys learned uh, before. So with the kind of guess and check me method, there's basically two parts. So we're going to choose P and Q. So we'll just choose different factors that multiply to get us A. We know that they can multiply to get us A. Then we'll choose factors of M and M, M and N, that multiply together to get us C. And then we'll just have to check to see whether or not it fits what we actually have for B. So let's look at that with our uh, first example, with this problem, or with our, I guess it's really our second example, the three X squared minus X minus 10. All right, so our first is our example was 3x squared minus x minus 10 equals 0. We'll assume we've already taken the liberty of dividing by 2 and gotten to this point where we needed help solving it. 
So the nice thing is, is that fortunately for us, at least P and Q only have, or I'm sorry, A, which is three, only has two factors that can really work. It has to be one and three. So we don't have to, we won't have to try multiple things over here. Then we have to try factors of M and N that might work for us. So we're trying to get things that multiply together to get 10. So the first one we'll try is one and negative 10. So we take one and negative 10 and then we figure out what would our B value be if we chose this. So we would take P, which is one, times N, which is negative 10, plus M, which is one, times Q, which is three, so negative 10 plus three, we get negative seven, so that is not our right answer. So we'd have to try again. So we'll try again. This, again, fortunately we don't have to change these. We can try two and negative five. And if we try two and negative five, with those factors, one times negative, one times negative five, and three times two, I get a positive one. Uh, but what I'm looking for is negative one. So that was not quite either. But an interesting guess on that a lot of times is if I'm that close, it may just be that I need to swap the signs. So let's try swapping the signs. Let's try negative two and positive five. And if I swap the signs, I get one times five and three times negative two, and I get negative one. So that led me, that gets the right answer. So my factors are, remember they have to be P, which is one, times X plus M, which is negative two in this case, and Q, which is three times X. And I can put the one in there if it helps you remember, to recognize where this came from. Of course, in general, we do not write coefficients of one out front, uh, but just to kind of remind you where these all came from. This is our negative two, and this is our plus five equals zero. So there's our factor, and then of course, uh, the way we would solve it is to uh, set each of those equal to zero. And I would get that x is two or negative five thirds. Um, so that's our solution there. So we were able to get to an answer here eventually by just guessing and checking the different options. And again, that's that wasn't too long because it only took us three chances to try to get there. If you have multiple options here for what P and Q can be, and multiple options here for what M and N can be, that can get very tedious. It doesn't take long before you're in a, uh, have to go through, try a very long string of things to hopefully get to the right answer. So let's see if we can find a method that uh, helps us get to our answer a little bit more quickly. Okay, so for the box method, let's start with the same set of principles. We've got the same equation, 3x squared minus x minus 10 equals 0. We're just going to hope this works a little bit quicker. So we know that a is 3, b is negative 1, c is negative 10. The key to starting this out is to think about what is a times c. And for this particular example, that is 3 times negative 10, which is negative 30. Now what they ask us to do is find factors of a times c that add up to b. So for our case, we're trying to find factors of negative 30 that add up to negative one. So I mean, I can start by doing one, negative 30. I know that's not gonna get me there quickly. Three, negative 10, uh, I skipped two, um, but five, negative six. So that equals one. So, this, so they would tell me to use the factors uh, five and negative six. And now the reason this is called the box method is because that's the next part we're gonna fill in. We're in the upper left corner, we're going to put our first factor. And in the lower right corner, we're going to put our C value. So this is A and this is C in these boxes. And then in the other two boxes, we're going to put uh, these middle two factors that we've got from this with, the, with X. So we're going to make one of these be 5X and the other one be negative 6X. And now the way, sorry to back up a minute. So yeah, just again, our box, we have A, we have C, we have 
our factor one times the x and our factor two times x there. And it doesn't matter if we switch those, that'll be okay. Either way it works out. And then once we have our box filled in, what they want us to do is find the common factors within each row and each column, and that'll help us determine what our uh, two different factors we have are. So how does that work? So let's look at rows. So this row, I have 3x squared times 5x. So the only factor these have in common is x. In the bottom row, I had minus 6x and minus 10. So a factor that they have in common is negative 2. Because this would be negative 3x and this would be left with positive 5. In the columns, the factors I have in common, so these two both have x and they both have a power of 3 or a factor of 3 in them. So I could have 3x from here. And then from this one, they both have a factor of 5 in them. So I could use 5 here. And so once I have that, those are my two factors. It's this and this. So it's essential. So my factors, so once I have these, I'm going to use those common factors to create a solution. My, so my solution is 3x plus 5 and x minus 2 has to equal 0. And so again, my answers would be that x equals negative 5 thirds or that x equals 2. And I can compare that, and it was the same answer I had previously, so that's a pretty good check. I could also plug it back into the original equation and make sure that works. Uh, but that's how the box method works. We can see that saved us quite a bit of time because it kept us from having, to, or at least would save us a lot of time when we have things with multiple factors because it, it saves us the time of having to combine all those different things. Um, we just had to worry about how can we factor one number, 30, and the combinations that get us to where we want to be. And then there's a little bit more work on the end, but we're not. Ch but that's just to get the answer back out. We're not spending all that time um, trying different combinations and see if they add up correctly. Let's try one more method. And I couldn't find a name for this one anywhere on the internet, but this is just what I learned in junior high school. Uh, and so I just called it uh, the Hogue Method after my math instructor, Mr. Hogue. So let's try this with our example. 3x squared minus x minus 10 equals 0. So we're going to see it mirrors a lot of what we did with the box method. So uh, the difference being that uh, to start out, what we're going to do is create factors with a x in both of them, and then we're going to add, we're trying to add something, obviously. Uh, we have to have our constant that we're adding there. And so the way we determine what we're adding there um, is similar to uh, what we did, again, with the box method, which is we're going to find factors of a times c that add up to b. So for our particular example, again, we have 3 times negative 10, which is negative 30. We're going to try to add those together. Um, to get to be. And we know from doing the previous problem, we know the answer is going to be uh, 5 and negative 6, but in terms of being fair to it, I probably would have gone through the same set of guesses. To so we would have gotten to the idea of 5 and negative 6 to get us there finally. So once we have those, again, we're going to write in our factors and we're going to put those in for those blank values. So there we see it. We would have 3x plus 5 and 3x minus 6, or plus and negative 6. So this should be minus 6 are two factors in. Now if we multiplied that back together we would get um, values that were too large. So the thing we have to do is divide out a common factor. So divide out that common factor within the parentheses. So 3x plus 5, those are both prime, there's no common factor there. 3 and 6, obviously there's a factor of 3 that I can divide out there. So I can rewrite that as 3x plus 5 times x minus 2, and we can set that back to equal to 0 as our original problem. And we'll see that those are the, we'll see that those are the same factors we got by doing these other methods, 3x plus 5 and x minus 2. Uh, and then of course the solution is negative 5 thirds and positive 2 if we want the solution. The key part of this is when we do this, 
Whenever we do this division, the factors that we divide by will equal A. In other words, remember by putting A in both spots here, we basically double, we basically squared the amount of A we had in there. We had a three and a three. When we knew when the, we knew our answer had to multiply together to just get three x squared. So um, yeah, we could have known that one of them was going to have to divide by three in this case. Or you may have cases, you may have other cases. Uh, I'm show an example of this perhaps, uh, where when we do that, you don't just take if you had the lead coefficient was say 12, um, then when you do this. You may get one is divided by three and the other ends up being divided by four, so how do you get your extra factor of 12 out, out of there? Um, don't know exactly what combination you're gonna have to divide by to get there, but you know whatever you divide by is gonna get A to get out that extra amount that we put it in. So there you have it. There's three different methods of how to uh, solve out the equation AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero when A is not equal to zero. And we can't just get rid of it by factoring. So um, hopefully one of those works for you. You can use any type that you like. The key is to just be able to use something to get us to the end of the answer.